This book is called My Old Pal Was a Junkie, and like all my books, it is a black comedy. Uh, it is partly a true story based on a girl I was at school with called Ray McFarlane. At school, she and I were close friends. When she got much older, she completely disowned me and threatened to serve a writ on me when I constantly tried to contact her. She went on to heroin. I wrote this book partly out of revenge. The main character in this book is called Jessie Cavendish. Jessie Cavendish was born Rosa Zartak, a Hungarian. She was adopted by an unsympathetic Presbyterian Scot living in England. She, Rosa Zartak that is, was the daughter of Laszlo Zartak, a gypsy, a thief and a liar. He was Hungarian and was killed at the border in 1956 when he and his five-year-old daughter were trying to escape to Austria. Rosa, also known as Jessie, was a brilliant musician and composer. She was convinced that she was descended from Barnes. Jessie was never going to lead a happy life. She too was a thief and a liar like her father. Her demons were unsupportable throughout her short life and yet she believed that love is stronger than death. After her father was shot dead as he attempted to flee Hungary during the communist uprising of 1956, she escaped to a convent and was adopted by a wealthy English woman called Jeanette Cavendish who demanded that she change her name from Rosa Zartak to Jessie Cavendish. Jessie and Jeanette did not get on, to say the least, and Jeanette sent her adopted daughter to an English public school called Waltham Abbey. Apart from the comfort of her close friend Marcia Ford and a prefect, Hilda Swain, whom she had a crush on, Jessie was profoundly unhappy at Waltham Abbey, where her prodigious musical talent flourished. However, she continued to be haunted by her memories of her beloved father and eventually began a shocking decline into drink, drugs, crime and underaged sex. After leaving Waltham Abbey, she entered the Royal Academy of Music. She was thrown out of the Academy due to spectacular absenteeism. She gave birth to a son called Zoltan, who was named after one of her criminal ancestors. Zoltan's natural father was a bisexual Scotsman. Jessie came home one day and found him in bed with another man. After that, Jessie drifted aimlessly across the country in a caravan living on heroin. She took Sultan with her until he was taken into care. She then saw no point in living. She decided to commit suicide by throwing herself off a motorway bridge. It was then that she met her saintly old friend from school, Marcia Ford, who had become happy and prosperous. Jessie told Marcia her tragic story, a story of loss, addiction and despair, which left Marcia reeling. The two women decided to spend the weekend together and Marcia entertained Jessie to the best of her ability. By Monday morning, we ask ourselves whether Marcia had given Jessie enough to live for, or whether Jessie would go through with the promise she made at the start of the weekend, namely to throw herself off the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol. 
Now we come to some reviews. Uh, this is one of Eleanor Perry's darker books, but it is deeply comical in places. She is to literature what Hieronymus Bosch is to art. As with all Miss Berry's books, the reader has a burning urge to turn the page. Sonia Drew, the International Continental Review, and this book has been translated into Russian, and it's very popular in Russia. Uh, and then I will add, incidentally, the most comical part of the book was when Marcia, who had become a communist, went to the Soviet embassy where she recited an obscene poem about Lenin's mother. The poem was entitled The Midwife Who Delivered Lenin and it went this way. Screaming with pain she in agony heaved, heavily sweating she heavily breathed. As a mother lay down and gave birth to a son, as the waters broke a new era began on the 22nd of April. And I it was who heated the coal to boil the water for the old bear's foal, who brought out the forceps to open the hole. And I it was who supplied the towels, and I it was who supplied the bucket, and I it was who had the honor to tie a knot in the cord and cut it. And it goes on, I am old and ill and lame. Today I tried to get out of a train, but a Coarse, rude ruffian blocked my path, an enemy of the working class. Who was this anti-Soviet lout who stood in my way when I tried to get out, when I tended the mare and punished her down, and slashed the cord when the feces crashed out? Take my sheath knife, comrade, a soldier said. His face was kindly and his soul was red and I lunged straight into the ruffian then, and I slit his throat as I slashed the cord. And when Marcia recited this at the Soviet Embassy, the man that she recited it to shouted, Posse, which means get out. That's uh, the most comical part of the book. There's another quite comical incident in this book, and that is, well, Jessie has to support herself by doing temporary medical secretarial work to support her heroin habit. And the administrator at one of the many hospitals she works in is called Mick the Rocker because he couldn't talk without making obsessive rock and roll movements. And he had a, a North Country accent. And when he spoke, he never, ever, ever used the definite article, which was so funny about it. And he was famous for his words, there's an awful lot of necrophilia going on in Mortuary. I know it's proving rude, but it's a subject that's got to be addressed. I don't think there's anything more to add. Thank you. Enjoy your read.